thank you so much for coming to this uh, press conference, almost 24 hours after the CEO of Pfizer, Mr. Albert, Albert Borla, was supposed to be present in the European Parliament in the special committee to investigate what happened uh, during COVID. And unfortunately, he was absent. He sent a representative who was unable, incapable, or unwilling to answer many of the questions asked by my colleagues. So we are here today. It's October the 11th. I'm here with more colleagues from different uh, political groups from different countries who will be addressing uh, some of the issues that were supposed to be uh, discussed uh, yesterday. So I would like to give the floor to my colleague from Italy, Francesca Donato. Thank you very much, Christian. Well, the conduct of Pfizer-BioNTech, uh, the biggest pharmaceutical company involved in the COVID-19 vaccines production, is deplorable and unacceptable in a democratic framework as the European one. Union one. Yesterday, in the official Parliament, uh, European Parliament Special Committee for COVID pandemic management, the Pfizer CEO Albert Burla refused to appear to answer our legitimate questions about his private text messages with the president of EU Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, that have already been considered to be irregular according to the transparency EU regulation by the EU Ombudsman and the EU Court of Auditors. He has sent Mrs. Small in his place, who has not answered the most important questions that our special committee has addressed to her regarding the company's price policy, the release of clinical trials reports, adverse effects, and other issues concerning the safety and efficacy of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines. <laughs> The continuous non-fulfillment of the duties of transparency by Pfizer's executives clearly violates the EU citizens' rights to know in detail how and for which purpose the taxpayers' money is spent. We're discussing about billions of public money that has been managed by the EU Commission by secret agreements directly conducted with the company's CEO, away from democratic control of people by their elected representatives in the EU Parliament. The refusal by President von der Leyen to disclose the content of their text messages first and the denial by Mr. Burla to appear in front of the Parliament then, followed by the reticent behaviour of Mrs. Small yesterday, casts concerning shadows on the legitimacy of the entire contract award process, leaving suspicion of corruption to emerge. Besides all of this, in all the discussions held yesterday and in previous auditions in COVID committee, all representatives of big pharmaceutical companies have shown a position that emphasizes the permanent threat for people's health given by the COVID pandemic, disregarding public and clear evidence about the mild symptoms given by the latest versions of SARS-CoV-2 virus currently circulating, thanks to which the emergency phase is officially over in all countries. Actually, Mrs. Small yesterday needed to announce a possible new variant being more aggressive as well as more contagious, disregarding any scientific literature, assessing that such evolution of a virus in nature is just impossible. The misuse of communication, falsely cloaked in a scientific truth, is just disgusting and misleading. Joined with this inexcusable lack of transparency, it has the only outcome of destroying any trace of trust in the whole scientific community by European people. I think that companies who behave this way should be banned by the lobbies allowed to enter the Parliament and the Commission, and that further investigation is needed by competent authorities to let the truth come to light and to secure the full right of the EU citizens to transparency and public interested oriented EU policies. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. What has or what was Pfizer got to hide? This is a question that we are all asking after we found out that the CEO of Pfizer, Albert Borla, pulled out. The interesting thing is a few weeks ago, the CEO of Moderna, 
you know, we were criticizing these pharma companies, you know, for being or for lacking transparency. But at least the CEO of Moderna had the courage, I would say, to come and answer questions. Yeah, he did not answer all the questions that we asked, but at least he was present here and were, was faced with all these questions that all of my colleagues asked. So obviously when we found out that the CEO of Pfizer decided not to come and answer questions, this, was, this is not an inquiry committee. So he was not bound by law to come and, you know, he was not on record, you know, he was not facing any criminal punishments in case he's lying in front of this committee. But even in that case, he refused to come and answer some concrete and specific questions. Questions that I think all of us and all of you have. And the first question is, what exactly in these contracts? What are they hiding exactly? I mean, in the previous press conferences, I, I showed you some of the pages you know, from these contracts. This is how they were disclosed to us and to the public and to the press. Obviously, after some of us and some of the brave journalists asked what are the contracts signed between the European Commission and these pharmaceutical companies. So this is how they, this is how they disclose the contracts. Over 100 pages, every contract with Pfizer, with Moderna, tens of pages of those contracts were blacked out. So yesterday when we asked, I was the one asking and some of my colleagues asked, when are they going to fully release these contracts? The representative of Pfizer, who was sent to replace the CEO of Pfizer, said that they can't fully disclose these contracts because they have some commercial secrets over there. And they have to protect their interests. Now I'm asking you, what about the interests of our people? What about the interests of the Europeans whose money was spent or wasted, I would say now, to buy these medical products that are not providing what they were marketed for. Because what we found out yesterday, when one of my colleagues asked if they tested, in this case Pfizer, if Pfizer tested, if their medical product is stopping the spread of the virus, we were shocked to find out yesterday that they haven't tested their vaccine to see if it's stopping the spread of the virus. So we are now more than a year after the green certificate, the digital green certificate was imposed in the European Union and people were forced to be vaccinated with the medical product in order to exercise their basic fundamental rights. And they were told and we were told. We were voted against the green certificate, but many of our colleagues voted in favor of it because they believe what these companies have said, that if you get vaccinated, you will not be infected and you will not spread the virus. They even ran campaign and said, get vaccinated in order to keep your grandmother and your parents healthy. And we find out now, after more than a year, that when they requested the special marketing authorization, they haven't tested the vaccine to see if it's stopping the spread of the virus. So I'm asking again, and we are asking again, what are they going to hide? What do they hide exactly? Why aren't they transparent with their medical product? We heard yesterday, I mean, it was, I was shocked because Pfizer used this opportunity just to do a PR campaign and even lecture us, why are we asking this and not asking that? Who are they to question us? What kind of questions do we ask? We are elected by the people for the people, not they. And they are supposed to, ans to answer all these questions, which they have not. There's another issue right now raised all across Europe. The excess mortality rate in the month of July 2020. According to Eurostat, in the month of July, the excess mortality rate all across European Union went up 16% more than the average of 2016 and 2019. Now, if you look on the map here, this is released by the Eurostat. It's not from us. If you look on this map, you will see that the countries with the highest vaccination rate have right now the highest mortality rate. So obviously we ask, is there a connection 
between being vaccinated and having a higher mortality rate? Everybody's avoiding answering this, I would say, logical question. There's another issue. A year ago, I requested Emma to submit some details and data to me because I wanted to have an informed decision, I would say, when I voted in favor or against the Green Certificate. And one of the questions that I asked Emma is to send me the, all the trials, the tests, the clinical trials that all these medical companies had done, either in animals or in humans before they requested the marketing authorization. So in the case of Pfizer, here's something interesting. When they submitted the information and the clinical trials to Pfizer, here's all the tests that they submitted along with the request. They submitted a clinical trial that started in January 14th, 2020. I asked yesterday the representative of Pfizer and she declined to answer. How is it possible that we, the world, found out in December of 2019 that there is a COVID or coronavirus, as it's called, in China, December of 2019. On January the 11th, the Chinese government released the DNA data or a segment of it to the public and three days later, Pfizer already started the tests for this vaccine. How is that possible? She did not answer. In the case of Moderna, and I've asked the CEO of Moderna two, three weeks ago when he was here, they submitted trials since 2017. So I'm restating the question, how is it possible that when we found out in the fall of December, you know, winter of 2019 about this virus, they submitted tests of their vaccines years before we found out about the virus. And I'm still asking that question now. How is that possible? So these are the legit questions that we all asked and that people are asking us. And unfortunately, they are declining to answer. So this was the, these were the, the main topics, I would say, that we tried to clarify yesterday. And unfortunately, the Pfizer representative, as Moderna representative, you know, decline to answer. We will keep pushing uh, to clarify these facts and nevertheless to make sure that the European Commission is going to fully release the content of these contracts. Thank you. And I would like to give the floor now to my colleague Virginie Joron from France. Merci Christian. Mesdames et messieurs, d'abord, je partage l'analyse de mes collègues. Ils ont parfaitement résumé la journée d'hier qui était une mascarade. Nous avons perdu deux heures puisque aucune des questions que nous avions posées qui étaient très claires, que ce soit sur les contrats, les SMS, les prix, les effets secondaires, aucune des questions n'a été répondue. Et j'ai envie de dire, en fait, dans ces, lors de ces deux auditions, euh, ils devraient prêter serment, puisque effectivement, c'est une audition officielle, et je regrette que, euh, effectivement, M. Bourlin ne soit pas présenté à cette audition, puisqu'on sait tous que c'est le contrat d'achat le plus important qui a été négocié au sein de la Commission. Je rappelle, c'est 2,4 milliards de doses pour au moins 36 milliards d'euros. Donc, avec tous ces faits, j'ai interrogé un cabinet d'avocats en France pour savoir ce que nous pouvions faire. Puisque manifestement, grâce à ce rapport de euh, la Cour des comptes de l'Union européenne qui vient d'être publié, nous avons 35 pages de critiques, de demandes, de manque de transparence. Et la page 33 est très claire où ils indiquent que des négociations préliminaires ont été faites par Madame van der Leyen et qu'à ce titre, elle a, elle a manqué de de, euh, professionnalisme. Donc un signalement de fait euh, de suspicion de corruption passive commis par Madame Van der Leyen qui porte atteinte aux intérêts financiers de l'Union Européenne va être fait. Je demande aussi à être reçu par la procureure européenne en chef et son, euh, via mon cabinet d'avocats qui est donc Laura Codruta Covesi et j'invite aussi tous nos concitoyens qui nous regardent de faire la même chose puisque un signalement est possible via ce site internet où en fait les intérêts financiers de l'Union européenne nous touche tous. Donc voilà, euh, pour résumer un petit peu la situation, je pense qu'aujourd'hui, maintenant, euh, vu euh, le constat que nous avons tous euh, 
vu hier, c'est qu'effectivement, ils viennent, ils ne répondent à rien et ils continuent à nous vendre leurs produits. Donc il faut maintenant agir. Je vous remercie. Thank you so much. I would like to give the floor now to Sylvia Limer from Germany. Thank you very much. First of all, I couldn't agree more with my colleagues on what has already been said here. It is a scandal that Mr. Bula is shirking his duty to speak and answer questions after having made the deal of his life for Pfizer with um, unsuspicious citizens. Citizens who believed the often groundless promises of the so-called 95% effectiveness and the absolute safety of the vaccine. And not only did they pay billions of euros in taxpayers' money for it, quite a few of them also paid for these promises with the loss of their personal well-being. So it was more than obvious for me to ask for the approval data for the vaccination, especially since the mRNA vaccines have now received full market authorization in the EU, which is completely incomprehensible and unacceptable to me. This at a time when even the media mainstream can no longer conceal the sometimes life-threatening or even fatal side effects. <clears throat> The committee meeting yesterday and the so-called answers to my questions have been an impertinence that cannot be surpassed. Mm. Mrs. Small, representing Mr. Burla, either pretended to be ignorant or was unwilling to address any of my questions. The EMA approval was made with reference to additional clinical trial data. Mr. Small would not answer questions about what the data material was. A mandatory study on safety for pregnant women was quietly discontinued by Pfizer. Preliminary data from V-SAFE, um, a program of the U.S. authority CDC, seems to show a devastating rate of spontaneous abortions in pregnant women. Mrs. Small declined to comment. But an unnamed Pfizer official in the room responded that corona could cause complications in pregnant women. It is unbelievable for me in what ways people are trying to dodge my questions. There are even no clinical trial at all available for the adopted Omicron variant. Mr. Small did not address this. Meanwhile, the Florida Health Department advises men up to the age of 39 not to get vaccinated because of the significant incidence of heart-related deaths. Mrs. Small has been silent on this as well. The pinnacle of the corona freak show for me was reached when they talked about real world data. Real world data means nothing else than in the absence of any suitable clinical study data, one pretends that the 900 million vaccine doses given in the EU are an adequate substitute. They are not. What's more, unsuspecting citizens who believed the promises of supposedly effective and safe vaccines were degraded to guinea pigs. And yes, this disinformation campaign must be addressed, but in a very different way from what an EU Commission <clears throat> imagines. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like to give the floor now to my colleague Ivan Sincic from Croatia. Thank you very much. So basically yesterday there was another session of COVID committee. Just like most of the sessions before, we couldn't get much answers. We had really good questions, but the other side, in this side, in this, in this uh, session, the representative of Pfizer and others couldn't provide us with any real answers. They were mostly doing their positive PR campaign. You know, they're using the committee to promote their products the, that are going to come, the next products, the next generation of products for Omicron now and things like that. So it is a major disgrace that the CEO of Pfizer, Mr. Albert Bauerla, failed to present himself before our committee. And it is even bigger disgrace that he has no real intention of appearing ever. Apparently, he only cares about the citizens' money and do not uh, about transparency and um, basically 
answering some questions uh, about his products and the uh, conducting of, of his company, so and so. So I will suggest uh, to the <laughs> Secretariat that invites our guests, the, the ones that we speak with, that uh, he should be invited using a text message and not an email next time. Perhaps he will appear in that, in that way. I come from Croatia, as my colleague Mr. Terhes said, and in Croatia we know how Pfizer does things. I will remind you of a huge scandal exactly 10 years <coughs> ago when Sp uh, Pfizer was penalized uh, for bribing Croatian doctors responsible for registration of medicines and for bribing doctors in bioethics <coughs> commission in Croatia who were evaluating clinical trials. And in the end, Pfizer had to pay $60 million just in, for that. And of course, if we look at the company history, we will see a lot of lawsuits and a lot of uh, fines being paid. For example, a few years before this case in Croatia, which was not limited just to Croatia, it was also in Bulgaria and some other countries. A few years before that, Pfizer had to pay $2.3 billion for false advertising. So when you have a company like that, using text messages uh, to communicate with the head of the commission, then a concerned citizens, citizen must ask himself or herself, what's happening here? Is this a conflict of interest? Of course it is. And the conflict of interest is the first step towards corruption. So basically, uh, we were discussing this text messages scandal some time ago, and we called upon President of the Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, to resign. And I will repeat my demand for her to resign because this cannot be accepted in a democratic society. I'm also pleased that yesterday on our committee session, some attention was um, given on the very good assessment of 500 independent Canadian medical doctors and scientists who were uh, proving uh, how Pfizer manipulated their initial study from December 2020, uh, which they used to get an approval. So they requested me to send it to them. I will gladly send it to them. and. I hope they will not be dodging the answers anymore. Uh, after all of this is over, I am not sure Pfizer will be the, the biggest company, pharmaceutical <clears throat> company, but uh, it will certainly remain a champion in escaping from answers to the public. Thank you. Thank you so much. And last but not least, my colleague, Christine Anderson from Germany. Yes, hello, good morning from me too. So, yesterday's session of COVID committee showed yet again that EU Parliament is nothing but a gigantic <laughs> show of democracy illusion to fool the peoples of Europe into thinking their interests were represented in Parliament. It is not though. Not only do the invited panelists, such as representatives of pharmaceutical companies or ministers of health from the member states, not answer any of our questions. No, they continue to spread disinformation about the safety and efficacy of mRNA injections. They continue to lie about and downplay, outright deny the uh, harmful effects of these injections. They continue to keep, uh, they continue to, uh, keep to deny the people access to the contracts and they continue to let Ursula von der Leyen get away with not disclosing the texts exchanged between her and Pfizer CEO Mr. Borla. In short, they continue to demonstrate their utter contempt for the peoples of EU. The chair of COVID committee, Ms. Kathleen van Bremt, Social Democrat in Belgium, does not run this committee to serve the people. She runs this committee to protect the interests of pharmaceutical companies, EU Commission and governments of EU at the expense of the people. Yesterday, Mrs. Van Bremt refused to put a point of order to a vote. This is a gross violation of the rules of procedure and demonstrates her disregard for democracy and the rights of the people.
You might want to drop her a couple of lines to let her know that you will not tolerate your rights being violated by her or anyone else for that matter. I had raised this point of order to declare COVID committee incompetent to serve the best interest of the people and to expose their scheme for lack of authority to compel anyone to appear in front of committee and to answer any questions. Thus, opening a way to have a formal committee of inquiry set up. A formal committee of inquiry would give the people the means to get to the bottom of things and would put an end to their plot of stripping the people of freedom, democracy and the rule of law. All of us here today and many more, there is more MEPs by now, we will continue to fight for a committee of inquiry. But we need you to join us in this fight. We need your help to do it. So here's what you can do. Write to your MEPs, call their offices, and keep doing it. I mean, do it over and over and over again, literally clocking their phone lines. Get on their nerves. Demand a committee of inquiry. And keep doing it for as long as it takes. Do not stop until your demands are met. It is your right. Let them know that in a democracy, it is in fact you, the people that are running the show. And if they fail to respect that, then let them know you will replace them. So please take charge, get involved. Don't let these anti-democrats get away with stripping you of your freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. If there are any questions online, no. Thank you so much. Have Thank a you. great day.